All right, I have some more identities for you today. We're going to work with double angles. So here's the first of our new one. We have sine of 2x, right? Double angle because it's 2x. So anytime you see sine of 2x, it can be substituted with 2 sine cosine. So let's simplify one. Right, bring this here. If we're going to simplify sine of 2 theta times cotangent plus tangent, remember when we're simplifying, we want to try to change everything into terms of sine and cosine if possible. So we're going to substitute in our new identity, 2 sine cosine, and we have to decide what should we put in for cotangent and what should we put in for tangent. Well, we're going to use cosine over sine for cotangent and sine over cosine for tangent. And I got rid of all the trig words just using the first letter of each trig word. All right, we're going to do some algebra now. We are going to take this 2SC and distribute. So here we have it distributed. And now we're going to do some multiplying. Well, in that first one, 2SC times C over S. The signs can cancel. So we have 2c times c giving you 2c squared. And over here, your cosines can cancel. So we have 2s times s giving us 2s squared. All right, we can simplify this a little bit more. What can you factor out of that? Factor out a 2, leaving you with C, which remember is for cosine, so cosine squared plus sine squared. You had an identity, Pythagorean identity. What is cosine squared plus sine squared? Well, that's one. So that simplifies into two. So this original problem we had simplifies to two. All right, let's apply that new identity we learned into an equation. So we are going to substitute 2 sine cosine in for sine 2x. All right, this gets our new identity. Then we bring down the rest of the equation. And then I rewrite it, getting rid of the words just using the letter. So now this here, we're going to use algebra to solve it. We're going to have to solve it for two trig functions. What can we factor out of that equation? Well, we have a C in both terms, so let's take out the C, leaving us with 2s plus 1. That C could equal 0. The 2s plus 1 could equal 0, which would mean s is negative 1 half. And then you ask yourself, where is cosine equals to 0? Where is sine equal to negative 1 half? Well, cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and down at 3 pi over 2. For the sine equaling negative 1 half, you forget the negative first. You ask yourself, where is sine equal to 1 half? That's at pi over 6. Then you ask yourself, what quadrant is sine negative in? And it's negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So what is pi over 6 in quadrant 3? That's the 7 pi over 6. And what is pi over 6 in quadrant 4? Negative pi over 6. All right, next identity, cosine of 2x. This one's a little bit more complicated because there are three choices, not just one. All three of these you have to pick from. Sometimes it can be tough to know which one to substitute in. So if we were going to simplify this fraction, We'd have to substitute in 2 sine cosine for our sine of 2 theta. And then we have to pick what we're putting in here. Well, we want to simplify this. So we're trying to get rid of as much as we can. We have this 1 over here. If we were to substitute in this one here that has a minus 1, then we could at least get rid of the 1s. So we can use 2 cosine squared minus 1. That's going in for this, and 2 sine cosine going in for a sine of 2 pi, 2 theta. Well, these 1s will go away. 
that leaves you with this, right? One minus one gone. And now I can reduce that. I can get rid of a C on the top for a C on the bottom. I can also get rid of the twos. So that's gonna leave me with sine over cosine. And what does sine over cosine equal? Well, that equals tangent. Okay, let's go for another one. We are going to do an equation this time. We're going to solve for x, and x is going anywhere from 0 to 2 pi, including 0 and including 2 pi. So we have to decide what we're going to substitute in here. Remember, it's always best if you can only have one trig function. Right now we have cosine and sine. So if we could substitute something in here to get rid of one of these, it would be great. And we do have one that has a minus sine squared in it. So if we use this, we could get rid of them. And that would leave us with just cosine terms. So we are going to substitute in for cosine of 2x, cosine squared minus sine squared. All right, this goes in here. Now I rewrite it. It's right here with all the words gone. I adjust the variables. If you were to add sine squared to both sides, the sine squares would be gone. So I can get rid of those. And then I have c squared. It's a quadratic equation, so I have to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to move the 2 over. That's where that minus 2 comes from. Then I'm going to factor this. Factor it. Set each factor equal to 0. Well, on the unit circle, there is no negative 2 for cosine. That one doesn't make sense, so we cross it off, leaves us with one answer. Where does the cosine equal 1? Well, it equals 1 at 0 and at 2 pi. So there are your answers. All right, another one with cosine double angle. We have to pick which one we're going to substitute in here. The other trig function we have is sine, so we want to pick one with sine in it, right here. So we put 1 minus 2 sine squared in place of the cosine 2x. Write down the rest of it. I then distribute my 3. And now I have to set it equal to 0. It's a quadratic equation. I'm going to try to factor it. So put it in the right order. I need the quadratic term to be positive. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. Factor this. Well, here's your factors. This is what you get when you solve. One of those you're not going to see on the unit circle. So that means we can cross off two-thirds. We can just work with where does sine equal negative one-half. That's going to be 7 pi over 6 and negative pi over 6.